As humans, we all do all we can to plan for tomorrow. We make sure we have food on the shelf and food in the refrigerator and have money in our account. We try to go to bed at night without worrying about what will I eat tomorrow. There was a time when the Jewish nation lived worry-free. It was a time where no one earned a penny because they didn't need to. God provided them with all their needs. I'm referring to the 40 years in the desert when food and shelter were provided at no cost. Every morning the Jews would wake up and find the earth covered with little white kernels of manna. The first time this happened, the Jews had no idea what it was. They asked Moses and he replied, this is heavenly food. He said each person was meant to collect a specific measurement of it called an omer every single day. Well, it so happened that some Jews were a little greedy. They thought the rules didn't apply to them, and so they collected more than what was prescribed for them. But the verse says in chapter 16, verse 18, Whoever gathered too much did not have more, and whoever gathered too little did not have less. The Jews discovered that notwithstanding their efforts or lack thereof, when they got home, each had exactly the same Omer of Mana. This lifestyle ingrained in them the knowledge that all sustenance comes from Almighty God. No matter how hard one works, you can't earn more than what God has in store for you. There was another most interesting element to this miraculous food. In the morning, they went out and collected their Omer, and throughout the day they ate it and enjoyed it. There was no such thing as leftovers. It had a 24-hour shelf life. If you left something in your jar overnight, the next morning there was nothing there, nothing left for the next day. They went to bed with the absolute confidence that tomorrow Hashem would provide them with more. God purposefully wanted them to go to bed with an empty cupboard. Rather than supplying daily allotments, God could have created continuously replenishing mana depots. The depots would be replenished every time someone took mana. This way our ancestors would never go to bed with empty shelves. They would always know where tomorrow's food would come from. But as it says in chapter 16 verse 4, God wanted to test the Jewish people. God wanted to see whether we would be content to put our complete trust in Him or not. Over the 40 years in the desert, our ancestors learned to trust. This nightly ordeal turned into a habit, and habit into second nature. They learned not to worry when facing empty cupboards. They learned not to ask, what will we eat tomorrow? They learned that God always comes through. And they learned that their portion in life is not dependent on how hard they work and how much they invest or scheme. They learned the higher power controls everything. And what He gives is always enough. If you think about it, When one worries about what will be tomorrow, without even realizing it, we are taking for granted that there will even be a tomorrow. We take for granted that the world will exist tomorrow, but for that to happen, God needs to create it. The time and space and all that is in it, including me and you, needs to be created by Hashem. The same God upon whom we rely to create us and the world can also be relied upon to provide us with what we need for that upcoming day. As Rabbi Eliezer taught in the Medrash Tan Chuma, he who created the day created sustenance for the day. And anyone who has sufficient food for the day and yet still asks, what will I eat tomorrow, is lacking in his faith. The 19th century Rabbi Yisrael Salanter, commonly known as the founder of the Musar movement, once gave a sermon in which he promised that anyone who relies on God with complete wholesome trust, God will provide him with whatever they need in life. There was one gentleman in the audience who took these words to heart and he quit his job and he went home and trusted that God would send him the 10,000 rubles that he needed. As time passed and no sign of the money he needed, the gentleman went to visit the rabbi with a complaint. I did all that you said in your sermon, said the man to the rabbi, and yet the money has still not come my way. The rabbi replied, let's make a deal. Let me purchase from you the 10,000 that God will give you for 5,000 rubles right now. The man said, you got a deal. You see, said the rabbi, the fact that you agreed to this deal shows your lack of trust in Hashem. For who in their right mind is ready to exchange 10,000 rubles for only 5,000? In the desert, it became natural to fully trust in Hashem. But once we left that environment for the land flowing with milk and honey, things changed. 
we were now given a new task of working the land and working for a living. The days of miraculous food would no longer be. However, we were only given our mission to enter the workforce after we went through 40 years of training. Let us never forget, we don't make the fuel. All we make is the piping. God supplies the fuel. We make a container and Hashem is the one that fills it. What goes inside is simply not controlled by us. And he who trusts in Hashem is enveloped in kindness. It is the key ingredient to living a content and happy life. I wish you a good Shabbos.